Good morning. Hi. <laughs> Brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God, the ground and pillar of the truth. Hi. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. Got something very interesting I want to share with you today. This is something that the Lord kind of stirred in me, kind of gave me a piece of it on Thursday. And yesterday, it, he ju it just exploded. Um, and he shooed me many things. Uh, went over this with my wife and uh, my best friend, uh, my friend that sticketh closer than a brother. We went through this and it's, wow, wow. This is going to, what we're going to be looking at today is in correlation to the time of Jacob's trouble. Brother Brian did that one video about how the lost world needs the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away. So once we, the Church of the Living God, are out of the way, then all the devils, all the Jesuits, and everything that uh, Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, has been setting, uh, trying to set up for centuries, then once we, the Church of the Living God, are out of the way, they're going to have free reign to do whatever they want to do because there's no one there hindering, letting, yeah, okay? Except all the fakes, but whatever. But we're going to be looking at, uh, at this aspect within um, the time of Jacob's trouble because there are those out there who say that the Christians are going to be going through the Great Tribulation, which is an absolute utter lie. Okay, absolute utter lie. And when you think about it, yeah, there are going to be Christians going through the Great Tribulation, aren't they? But it's the time of Jacob's trouble. And it is for the Jews. Okay? But we're going to look at this. So, turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8, beginning at verse 23 on to verse 25. Okay? You are expected to follow me along. Follow me along in the scriptures. We begin. Daniel chapter 8, verses 23 on to verse 25. And in the latter time of their kingdom, their kingdom, whose kingdom? Keep reading. When the transgressors are come to the full, when the transgressors are come to the full. Right now, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Right? That's in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. You go find that. Okay? The he who now letteth will let is what? The church of the living God, the body of Christ. Because God is omnipresent, always around. He ain't going anywhere. But he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Okay? That's referring on to the church of the living God, the body of Christ. The ground and pillar of the truth. Okay? So, when you look at this, verse 23, And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full. Whose kingdom? The transgressors. A king of fierce countenance. Remember, the countenance is the outer appearance, okay? Not the visage, okay? Uh, because remember, our Lord said unto, who was it, Cain? Why is thy countenance fallen? Okay? His expression, why is he like all downcast and stuff like that? Okay? A king of a fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences, sentences shall stand up. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. Why is that? Why is that? Because the son of perdition, the beast, okay, is going to be indwelt by Satan himself. Okay? And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And also that's going, that also alludes to uh, the beast, the system also, that the son of perdition is going to sit upon, that kind of stuff, okay? And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper, and practice, 
and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to pos uh, prosper. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the capital P, Prince of Princes, the capital P, Prince of Princes, is referring on to our Lord Jesus Christ, but he shall be broken without hand. And when you look at verse 23, okay, and in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of a fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. Who is this? This is the son of perdition. Inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. Okay? I'm going to link that video in, this, in the description box of this one. Okay? Go to Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. Okay? Verses 21 on to verse 24. Okay? Daniel chapter 11, verses 21 on to verse 24. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably, and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. And with the arms of a flood shall they be over, over, uh, overflown from before him. And shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. He shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. Oh, like the Jesuits? He shall enter peaceably, even upon the fattest places of the providence. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches, yea. And he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds, even for a time. And also go now to verses 36 on to verse 48, uh, 38, excuse me. Okay, 36 on to verse 38. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, that's a lower G, of course, and shall speak marvelous things against the God, capital G, of gods, little g, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, the God, capital G, of his fathers. The son of perdition is definitely going to be of Jewish origin. Absolutely. Absolutely. The God of his fathers. Absolutely. Going to be of Jewish descent at the least. Maybe a mix of Jew and maybe a Syrian, some have uh, guessed. But nevertheless, he is going to be of Hebraic origin, to say the very least. Okay? The God of his fathers. And also, I to this day believe that he is going to be associated with Roman Catholicism. Because when you look in the history of the popes, there has never been a Jewish pope before. And think about that. Once he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, you know, the redemption of the purchased possession, we, the church of the living God, okay? Once we're taken out of the way, and the son of perdition is going forth conquering and to conquer, I still to this day believe that he's going to go forth conquering and to conquer who? The sons of Ishmael, the Muslims, okay? That's who I believe he's going to be going forth conquering and to conquer. What better way to ingratiate himself onto the Jews than having the very first Jewish Pope? Think about that. Gnaw on that for a little bit, okay? Continuing in verse 37 on to verse 38 here in Daniel chapter 11. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the, nor the desire of women. Is he going to be a sodomite? Maybe. I think, more rather, the vow of celibacy. 
that he's going to be celibate as a pope. Could this mean that he's going to be a sodomite? Yes. Could it mean that? Yes. Could it also mean that he's going to be celibate as a celibate pope? Yes. We don't know because guess what? You and I, Church of the Living God, we ain't going to be there for this. You Christians, you easy believism heretics, yeah, you guys are going to be here. <laughs> yeah, take a note of that, okay? Let's read that again. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. Like Satan did in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 under verse 15. I will be like the Most High. Okay? But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. And of course, you look in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, ties together. Okay? This is talking about the son of perdition. That man of sin. Inaccurately, inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. And when you look back in Daniel chapter uh, nine, uh, chapter 8, verse 24, okay? Daniel chapter 8, verse 24. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Who is that? See, those who are called post-tribbers, they're talking about, well, that, that's the Christians. <laughs> yeah, no, it's the Jews. Prove it to you. Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. J Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. Just go across the page or turn the page in your scriptures, okay? Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. Thy people, thy holy city. Gabriel was talking unto who? Daniel. Who is Daniel? Of the lineage of King Hezekiah, yes. But guess what? He was a Jew. So, seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city, the Jews, Jerusalem, it is the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob is Israel, okay? To finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. One second. Sorry about that. I forgot to turn off the thing on my phone and... Brother, you know we will. Okay? Yeah, that was you that you heard, brother. Yes, you know we will. Okay? Now, let's continue. Okay, we just looked at verse 24 in Daniel chapter 9 in uh, cross-reference to Daniel chapter 8, verse 24. And now look at verse 25 in Daniel chapter 8. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes. But he shall be broken without hand. Through peace he shall destroy many. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verses 1 on to verse 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 3. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, Then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Okay? Now, when the Lord lets loose 
that man of sin, the son of perdition, he is going to for, going to go forth conquering and to conquer. Okay? And he is going to leave a wake of destruction in his path. But he's going to be going forth in the name of peace. Why? Because I personally believe that he is going to go forth to conquer and conquer, go forth to conquer the Muslims at first. Because remember, remember, he's got to make himself look good onto the Jewish people. Okay? Because the church of the living God, we're not going to be there. And all these fake Christians, or excuse me, all these Christians, you know, loaded with Jesuit coadjutors, they're the ones who are going to be here. Okay? And he then. The son of perdition is not going to be going after his own. <laughs> no, no. D meaning these Christians. No, he's going to be going after the Muslims. Okay. That's what I believe. Okay. But in that, he's going to leave a wake of destruction, but he's going forth in the name of peace. Okay, and also there's going to be famine, disease, that kind of stuff in his wake. But remember, he's going forth in the name of peace and safety. Okay, now go to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Now, I have a expository video on this, um, which I will link in this video, where we go through Revelation chapter 12 in depth. We're going to be looking at verses 13 on to verse 17 in Revelation chapter 12. Okay? Okay? Now, well, remember what we just looked at in Daniel? Okay? Now, Revelation chapter 12, verses 13 on to verse 17. Okay? And when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Now, who is the dragon? Look at verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Beg your pardon. Okay? So the dragon is who? Satan. And who is the woman? Verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, S-U-N, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, representing what? The twelve tribes of Israel. The woman is Israel. <coughs> Excuse me. The woman is Israel, Okay. The dragon is Satan. The woman is Israel. The church of the living God is not here on the earth during this time. Okay? That is the redemption of the purchased possession, which is in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Okay? Where he says, come up hither. Okay? Uh, I believe that's one, or it might be three. I, I, I often get that confused. Uh, let me see. Yes, it's in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Okay? But the dragon is Satan, the woman is Israel. Okay? And the woman, and who is the man-child, by the way? Who is the man-child? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a Jew. Salvation is of the Jews. Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, came of the Jews. Okay? So the dragon is Satan, the woman is Israel, the man-child is our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Time for, nourished for a time and times and half a time. You can guesstimate roughly about three and a half years. 40 and 2 months, okay? And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. And when you read the book of Revelation chapter 17, peoples are likened unto many waters, okay? 
So he casts out of his mouth waters. People, many people, by deceiving them with lying signs and wonders? Hmm. Okay. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And remember he was going to, uh, to uh, uh, afflict the holy, mighty and holy people, the Jews. Okay, remember that, what we looked at already? And the dragon was wroth with the woman. Satan was angry, wroth with Israel, the Jews. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. The remnant of her seed. Those who are, in, who are surviving, enduring to the end, you should say, during this time period. Okay? The remnant of her seed. Those that have survived the initial onslaught, that kind of stuff, okay? And went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which, pay attention, keep the commandments of God, this remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, faith and works, during this time period. Okay? It's faith and works during this time period. You got these easy believism heretics building you up right now for when after the redemption of the purchase possession happens, the catching away, you guys who are left behind, you're going to be all prepared because these fakes, these Jesuit coadjutors, are looking like, oh, we're King James Bible believing Christians and we're still here. See? That's what these people are preparing you for. But see, verse 17 again. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. At some point during all of this, during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's not going to be right away. I personally believe that it's going to be midway in the middle of the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? When the Jews are going to figure out, wow, all those King James scripture believers who aren't here were actually telling us the truth. During the time of Jacob's trouble, there's going to be a point when Jewelry is going to get it. The remnant of her seed. Not all of them are. Of course not, no. But the remnant of her seed. Oh, you know, like the, what was it? The 7,000 or 5,000 that have not bowed their knee to, um, bowed their knee to Baal. You know, the Baal, the sun-shaped cookie that the Catholic priest raises up, venerates and worships, that kind of stuff. Hmm? The remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, let's read Revelation chapter 13 in its entirety. Okay? And I, stand, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his, upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Oh, Mystery Babylon the Great, Roman Catholicism, perhaps. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. You know, in 1 Peter chapter 5, where Peter mentions that our adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And isn't our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, also referred to as the lion of the tribe of Judah? 
Didn't Satan say, I will be like the Most High to replace, hmm? to replace and to copy, you know, imitate? Keep that in mind, okay? And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Remember what Satan said unto Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 4? All oh, this is given unto me, and whomsoever I will, I give it unto. If thou therefore shalt bow down and worship me, all shall be thine. Satan trying to tempt God the Father. <laughs> As if God the Father would sin. Yeah. Verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. Now note that it says wondered there. Wondered like wow. Here this guy some assassination attempt happens to him. And he was wounded. But yet he was. What does it say here? And his deadly wound was healed. Healed. It doesn't say that he was brought back to life, does it? No, it doesn't. You show me in the scriptures one place where a devil was able to bring someone back to life. Okay? Some of you might be saying, well, the uh, witch at Endor, right? Uh, the Lord allowed that to happen because the witch uh, of Endor, that's in uh, 1 Samuel, uh, the witch in Endor was like, ah, scared her because it actually happened. You know, uh, the Lord allowed Samuel to be brought up from Abraham's bosom to speak on the salt, okay? The devil didn't do that. The devil did not do that, okay? Just so you know. Let's continue. But in verse 3, it says, wondered. Like, wow. Verse 4, and they worshiped the dragon. The dragon is who? Satan which gave power on to the beast, that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Because remember, during this time, I believe wholeheartedly, it's going to be pre-Vatican II, Roman Catholicism, extreme Roman Catholicism, and Roman Catholicism, Jesuitism is a religion of what? Flesh. Okay? So when these people, when the Church of the Living God is not on the earth, okay? When these people see this miraculous thing through lion signs and wonders, woody woody woo, okay? They're going to be, wow. What does it say there? Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Forty and two months. You do the math. Three and a half years. Okay? And he opened his mouth. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, the rebuilt temple, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Now, remember, never mind Roman Catholicism, Jesuitism, okay? Today in this dispensation... You are of the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted. Guess what? You're a saint. Okay? <laughs> to Roman Catholicism, you Jesuits. Okay? A saint is someone who is saved. Okay? In the Old Testament, they were refer referred to saints. Yes. Okay? Saint is not some glorified thing that Catholicism bestows on somebody. No. So a saint is someone who is in league with the Lord, okay? The true Lord, 
our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? That's what that is. And remember, we, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, the ground and the pillar of the truth is, are, is not here during this time. So these saints are what? Jewish. Those who what? Verse 17 in uh, Revelation chapter 12, the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ? Hmm. Okay, let's continue. In verse 7 in Revelation chapter 13. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds, okay, and tongues, languages, and nations. Okay? And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. I have a whole video on this uh, about the Lamb's book of life. If I can remember that, I will link it in this video as well in the description box. Okay, already covered that, so not going to get off on that. Verse 9, if any man have an, he have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. He who endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Yeah, because during this time period, the time of Jacob's trouble, this dispensation, eternal security is not there, my friend. The only ones that are sealed, that are eternally secure, are the ones listed in Revelation chapter 7. The 144,000 Jews. Okay? The Jews. They're the only ones. The 144,000. They are the only ones that are sealed in this time period. Okay? Let's continue. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. Now this is the false prophet. And we're going to look at that here in a little bit. Okay. We will look at this here in a little bit. Um, uh, a little later on. This right here that is being described in Revelation chapter uh, 13 verse 11. Is referred to as the false prophet. We'll get to that later. Okay. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Spake as a dragon. Speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits, flatteries. Oh, like what a devil does? Like the, dra like the devil does? Whose mouth is smoother than honey, but war was in his heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Kind of liken this in a way, think about it like this. Remember in the book of Exodus, where the Lord spake unto Moses and Moses spake unto Aaron, okay? Satan is copying that, okay? The dragon Satan is going to indwell that man of sin, the son of perdition. And the false prophet is going to be pointing to the beast, the son of perdition, okay? Very similar like that in that incident, okay? Verse 13. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Lying signs and wonders. Very similar, verse 13, to Elisha. When he said, was sitting on the hill, and they, they sent the captain of fifties, and he said, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. Okay? Very similar to Elijah, who had power to call down fire from heaven. Okay? Elijah is one of the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah. Because remember, Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind. 
He didn't see death. He will see death as one of the two witnesses. But Elijah himself, and you read that in Malachi chapter 4, okay? Elijah himself is going to be here during this time period. One of the two witnesses. And here's this guy, the false prophet, imitating, just like the magicians in Egypt, some of the things that Elijah is going to be able to do. Okay? Keep that in mind. Verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had a wound by a sword and did live. Now, as far as the image of the beast, is that going to be a statue similar to um, Nebuchadnezzar, you know, in his dream? Because remember, the thing that he set up was not a statue. It was an obelisk, okay, which he was wanted the uh, three, uh, three children from Israel to bow down to, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, okay? He wanted them to bow down to a obelisk. Kids, parents, which is a male phallus, an uncircumcised male phallus. Okay? That's what Nebuchadnezzar wanted these guys to bow down to. And they're like, Bloop. no. But is this going to be a statue? I don't know. I don't know. Okay? I don't know. But let's continue reading. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Can you find any one of you and put it in the uh, comment section, okay? Can any one of you think of one incident in the scriptures where the devil brought some inanimate object to life? Hmm? Can any of you think of, uh, put the verse in the description box. Okay, where a devil brings an inanimate object, a statue or something to life. Okay, if you find something in the scriptures, I couldn't think of any. My brother couldn't think of any. My friend, my wife couldn't think of any. Okay, we couldn't think of any. So if there's something that one of us have missed, you got it. Put it in the description box or in the comment section. Okay, but. Verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now you might be saying, well, isn't that what he's doing right now? Maybe, maybe, with lying signs and wonders, maybe, maybe, okay, I don't know. Could it be a statue or could it be some kind of holographic image through, you know, the internet? Okay, could it be that? I don't know. The uh, Christians that are going to be here during the time of Jacob's trouble, they'll tell you if you're left behind. <laughs> okay? Verse 16, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. That's all encompassing. You got guys like Kent Helvin, John MacArthur, who say that, you know, you lop it off, or excuse me, you lop it off or gouge it out. No, no, no. Uh, Ken Helvin said uh, about this, okay, that you had to have the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name, like one of three things. No, it's all encompassing in one thing, okay? It's all encompassing one thing. And think about this. In verse 17, isn't that a good picture of the Roman Catholic Trinity? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Three divine persons. Oh, wow. Huh? Yeah, get a load of that. You satanic Trinitarians. Okay? 
Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Six, six, six. I keep forgetting what ancient language it is. Brethren have tell, told me, have put it in, com, in the comment sections before, but 666 equates in what, what is it? Ancient Hebrew, ancient Greek, ancient Syriac, in some ancient language. I always forget this. One of you know this? Put it in the comment section and I'll pen it, okay? But 666 equates to W W W the World Wide Web. So knowing that about the image of the beast, is it a statue? Don't know. Is it a holographic image? with the 5G kind of stuff and all the computery stuff, could it be that? I don't know. Like I said, if you're left behind these easy believism Christians, they'll tell you. <laughs> okay? So, now keep in mind, brethren, and to those of you lost people, and you Jesuit devil coadjutors, you already know this because this is what you're working for. The ends justify the means, right? This is what you're trying to prepare people for. What's going on right now, what's going on right now is preparatory for those of you who are going to be left behind to take the mark of the beast. You know, <laughs> the, the social distancing, all of that is preparing you to take the mark of the beast. That's all it is, okay? And then you got people like John MacArthur, okay? And his little yes man, Justin Peters, who did a video about the King James onlyism stuff, which I have not watched yet. It was pointed out to me, like, what? Yeah, little Justin Peters, John MacArthur's yes man, okay? Yeah, yeah. But um, you got guys like that saying that if you, you know, lop off the hand, gouge it out, you know, you'll be okay. You can take the mark of the beast. Eh, eh, but no, no. What happens if someone takes the mark of the beast during that time period? Okay. Faith and works, the commandments of God and the, have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, Revelation chapter 14, verses 1 under verse 12. Revelation chapter 14 now, verses 1 on to verse 12. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him an hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Hundred and forty-four thousand. These are the hundred and forty-four thousand Jews that are sealed in Revelation chapter 7. Okay? That's these Jews. And it says, having his father's name written in their foreheads. The name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Ghost. All singular. The name of, the name of, okay? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. There is no other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved at the name of Jesus Every knee shall bow, should bow, it says. But every knee shall bow at the name of Jesus. I believe, having his father's name written in their foreheads, I believe that they're going to have the name of Jesus Christ written in their foreheads. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is what I believe. That's going to be Jesus Christ. Is it going to be in Hebrew? Yeshua HaMashiach? I don't know. But that's what I believe. That's what I believe. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne, 
and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man can learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. For, thee, for these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Now hold on. It says, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. The first fruits. These were sealed during this dispensation. Okay? Okay? My brother brought this up. Okay? So, are these the fir first fruits ever? Or just for this dispensation? You know how there's a time and season and a purpose to every season or whatever under heaven, like it says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3? For every time there is a season... A dispensation? The dispensation that we are in, the time of the Gentiles, okay? The first fruits of those who got saved in our dispensation, but where right here where it says, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb, the first fruits in the dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble. Because the hundred and forty four and note that it's talking about the hundred and forty four thousand, remember. Because in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, okay, we are sealed until the day of redemption. You are saved, born again, converted. You are sealed. You cannot become unsealed. You have God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit dwelling within you. You are sealed. You cannot become unsealed, okay? This dispensation ends with the redemption of the purchased possession. That's the end of this current dispensation. Okay? And Paul even mentions about the first fruits of those in Christ uh, in Achaia. Okay? It's talking about a different dispensation. The first fruits there. Okay? Are these the first fruits of those who were ever sealed? No, because this dispensation... This dispensation, those of us who are of the church of the living God, we are sealed. First fruits here being mentioned are talking about the 144,000 sealed Jews. Okay? They are the first fruits in this dispensation, the time of, Gent uh, the time of uh, Jacob's trouble. And they are the only ones who have eternal security during the time of Jacob's trouble. They're, they're the only ones because they're the only ones who are sealed. Because, now let's continue in Revelation chapter 14. What happens to those who take the mark of the beast? Continuing at verse 5. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Yeah, because they're sealed. Okay? They are the first fruits in the dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble. Not the first fruits of any of those who have ever been sealed. Because like I said, today, we, the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth, we are sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? It's, it's a different, it's talking about this, this dispensation, the time of Jacob's trouble, dear friend. Okay? Verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach on them that dwell on the earth. Now, hold on. The everlasting gospel? You got guys out there who want to say that in this dispensation, it's going to be the just believe, right? And once they just believe, they're, they're sealed, right? Just believe, just believe. No scriptural brokenness or contrition, godly sorrow, no repentance, Okay? The everlasting gospel. This is not the gospel that is preached today. No. The everlasting gospel. The gospel of the kingdom of heaven that will be coming. Okay? Because in this dispensation, as we're going to see, if someone takes the mark of the beast, it doesn't matter who it is, you're going to hell. 
No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Because once they take the mark of the beast, I believe that their minds are going to be alienated from God because of the mark of the beast, whatever it is. Okay? Whatever it is that makes them alienated. But our, our Lord says clearly, you take that thing, you're done. That's it. And see, that's what all these people who are the, these devils, these coadjutors, these twits, people. This is what they want, they are preparing you for. You need to get saved. And get out, and that you can get out of here before this time. Okay? Because that's what these guys, these devils, these Jesuit coadjutors, Jesuits themselves, these devils... This is what they're preparing you for. This everlasting gospel is not the gospel of today by grace through faith. It is not. It is not. Because this dispensation by grace through faith ends with the redemption of the purchased possession. And this dispensation, the time of Jacob's trouble, is faith and works. Because, think about it, okay? These Christians that are left behind, okay, when it comes to this, they're going to be saying, just believe. Just believe. It's the same gospel that Paul preached. The everlasting gospel. Just believe. You can take the mark because, hey, you believe, right? You're sealed. Don't worry about it. Well, what does it say? What about that? Don't worry about that. You believe, right? Right? You believe? Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. You're safe. You're safe. Go ahead. Take the mark of the beast. See? That's what you, you devils are doing. All of you. That's what you're doing. People, wake up. The, these devils, yeah, they're Christians. Sure. Bravo. They ain't of the church of the living God. They are preparing you people to take this mark of the beast. This everlasting gospel is not the gospel that Paul preached for us today. No. It's the gospel of the kingdom of heaven that will be coming after the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Because, now let's keep reading. Verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the foundations of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen. Mystery Babylon the Great. Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism, unless you're Henry Morris or Kent Helvin, okay, who like to say that Mystery Babylon is either America, yeah, right, um, what about America? I don't think America is going to be here during the time of Jacob's trouble. I think the, this remnant of America is going to be a shambles destroyed uh, it's, I believe, quite possible before the uh, redemption of the purchase possession, I believe it's quite possible that my nation, America, will be obliterated before that. I hope not, but uh, yeah, with uh, President Harris uh, running the show with her front man, Smoking Joe, yeah, 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 I don't think America's going to make it. And you, my countrymen, if you think we are, you got some problems. You really do. Okay? But, okay? Verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon has fallen, has fallen. That great city, the Vatican, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And look at it throughout history, people. Okay? Just in America. George W. ran out on the tarmac to greet the poop. Okay? Barack Hussein Obama. He went and bowed down to the poop. Uh, Reagan 
you know, had an audience with the Pope. All these world leaders meet who? Putin? No. The Pope. All the world leaders meet the Pope. Okay? Okay? You get that? Okay, now let's continue. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice. Now pay attention. Okay? If this is the, uh, if the everlasting gospel mentioned in verse 6 is the gospel that Paul preached, where you cannot become unsealed, okay? And we just saw the only ones that are sealed, uh, you read Revelation chapter 7 on your own time, are the 144,000 Jews, which are not the Jehos, okay? You got a big problem here. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, how do you worship the beast and his image? And receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. It's not a threefold thing like what Kent Helvin said. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Okay, and here's to Mr. Bullinger. Soul annihilationism. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. Mark chapter 9, where he says, Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Okay? I personally believe where he says, Their worm dieth not, is referencing onto the soul. Why doesn't he say soul? Well, he spake in parables, for, because those who had eyes to see and ears to hear would get it. Those who were not, didn't have that stuff, weren't seeking, they wouldn't. That's why he spake to people in parables. Okay? But I believe that when he said, where their worm dieth not, is a reference onto their soul. Okay? Soul annihilationism, as taught by E.W. Bullinger, okay, is heresy. And incidentally, I finally did was able to get a copy of the the companion Bible, so I can go over some of those notes to to see what this guy actually taught. Does you know? I didn't. I know he taught that. I know a lot of what E. W. Bullinger uh, taught influenced the Shepherd's Chapel. Okay, that I know, but that's another story. But right here it says in verse eleven. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night. Who worship the beast in his image. And you do that by taking that mark. And look at that. Look at the, look at the scripture. Quit looking at me. And whosoever. What does whosoever mean? It means whosoever. You mean these Christians that are going to be in the time of Jacob's trouble who are going to be telling you to go ahead and take the mark because you just believe you're sealed? Yeah. That's their end game. That's their end game. And how many of you people don't want to believe the truth? But want to believe yourself a good person by just believing but, and saved by what you do. Not that the Lord saves you, but you save yourself by believing. Yeah. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever... Receive it the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. He who endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Don't worry, we're getting to Matthew chapter 24. Don't worry about it. 
We're not going to look at that, but we're going to be looking at something else. But yes, we're going to Matthew chapter 24. Shh, don't get ahead of me, okay? Here are they that keep the commandments of God, oh, like keeping the Sabbath, and the faith of Jesus. Faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble, people. James chapter 2. Okay. Book of James is the time of Jacob's trouble epistle. Same with the book of he uh, Hebrews is the time of Jacob's trouble epistle. Okay. It's faith and works. And it... If you are choosing to believe these Jesuit devils who are, who are adamantly fighting against the scriptures saying that it's not faith and works in the time we take us trouble, it's just faith alone. The truth is out there. Okay? If you choose to believe in a lie, God is giving you what you want to believe a lie. Okay? You want to believe a lie? Go ahead. That's on you. Be careful what you wish for. The Lord might just give it to you. Okay? But now, go to Job. Job chapter 23. Thursday. On Thursday, the Lord showed me first of this, Job, Job chapter 23. And he showed me also Psalm 57 on the same day, on Thursday. And I w went over them and I was like, okay, thank you, Lord. I, I don't get what, what you want me to see, but, you know, went over it. And then yesterday gave me the rest of it the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Job chapter 23. Okay? The Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble, I believe, midway when the that man of sin, the son of perdition, the abomination that maketh desolate, we're going to look at that, goes into the holy place, the rebuilt temple, the third temple, and says, hey, I'm actually your God. He's going to be Jewish, Hebraic, at least a mixture, okay? And I believe he is going to be a pope of some kind. I do believe that, whether the black pope or the white pope, whatever, okay? I truly believe that. And at that point, I believe that the Jews are going to be like, wow, all those guys and ladies that disappeared of the church of the living God who had that adhered to the authorized version of the scriptures, who were warning us and telling us this. Wow, they they were actually telling us the truth, and these devils are the ones that are wow. Wow. There is going to be a point when the Jews, the remnant of her seed, are going to get it. And kind of reminiscent to the Holocaust time, which you can look up in uh, uh, Psalm 102, which is, I believe, also making reference on to the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? The Jews, as a people, are going to be what? Longing for God. Which they just kind of realized, wow, this Jesus... That, see, that's the significance of the book of Hebrews. Once they get it, they're going to go to the book of Hebrews. Because they know, they're going to know then, that you got these Christians during the time of Jacob's trouble who are saying, just believe, to take the mark of the beast. And these Jews are not going to defile themselves with the king's meat. That's, that's a different video that the Lord's working on with me. Okay? But... They're going to be longing for God. Job chapter 23. Now think about this. The Jews 
during the time of Jacob's trouble once they get it. Then Job answered and said, Even today is my complaint better. My stroke is heavier than my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. I would order my cause before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he would say unto me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would put strength in me. There the righteous might dispute with him. So should I be delivered forever from my judge. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. And behold, uh, behold, I go forward, but he is not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. Remember in Amos chapter 8, about the famine in the land? The scriptures are going to be available during the time of Jacob's trouble. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? Oh, absolutely. And the Jews are going to find, absolutely, the scriptures, the true scriptures. But you also got to remember that when the people take the mark of the beast, their minds are going to be alienated from God. They're, they're gone. Okay? Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. The authorized version of the scriptures is going to be there. The, the Jesuit devils, Catholicism, can't destroy it. But as you know, they've done a lot of things to copy it and to try to replace it. Hence, that in Amos is going to reach its fulfillment in the time of Jacob's trouble. But God's word standeth forever. The authorized version of the scriptures. Let's continue. Verse 10, but he knoweth the way that I take when he hath tried me, the time of Jacob's trouble, I shall come forth as gold. My foot hath held his steps, those who keep the commandments of God and, have, and the faith of Jesus Christ, or, and the testimony of Jesus Christ, excuse me. His way have I kept and not declined. My foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. The commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Well, you keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Faith and works. They don't say. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Remember, during the time of Jacob's trouble, unless you've got that mark, you can't buy or sell. You're not going to be able to get food. See? Okay, get it? And here in America, especially in other places on the, on the earth, they're going to, you know, the thing and the shot, okay? Preparing you. You won't be able to get go into a grocery store and get food, no matter how much trouble you cause when you go in there without a mask. <laughs> but, um, you know, they're preparing people. Today! You and get the shot in order to go into a grocery store, right? During the time of Jacob's trouble, that's the real deal. Unless you get that mark, you're not going to be able to go buy and sell. You're not going to be able to eat and get food, Right? Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth. Where do you find the words of his mouth? The authorized version of the scriptures. Mr. Peters. Calvinist. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Talk about living by the scriptures. Well, they're going to have to do it in the time of Jacob's trouble, boy. <laughs> you think you're prepared for that, huh? I'd never make it. Praise the Lord. I don't have to worry about that. 
My wife doesn't have to worry about that. Those who are saved, born again, converted, we don't have to worry about that. You Christians, you coadjutors, you got a lot to be afraid of. Up the dosage there, guys. <clears throat> okay. But he is in one mind, and who can turn him? And what his soul desireth, even that he doeth. For he performeth the thing that is appointed for me. The time of Jacob's trouble. He performeth it that is appointed for me. And many such things are with him. Salvation is of the Jews. Okay? Therefore, I am troubled at his presence. When I consider, I am afraid of him. For God maketh my heart soft. Yeah, during the time of Jacob's trouble... Once the Jews figure it out or are shown and get it, their hearts are going to become very, very soft. Very soft. Oh, yeah. And the Almighty troubleth me. God is the author of the time of Jacob's trouble. Just like God was the author of the Holocaust. Yes. Yes, I, I've already covered that. I truly believe, and I believe provable in the scriptures, that the Holocaust of the Jew in World War II, the over six million that were targeted by Rome, was a judgment from the Lord. I truly believe that. That's why this time period because remember, he's going to he's going to be wroth with the woman and really go nuts, ape, after the Jews, after they figure it out. Verse 16. For God maketh my heart soft, and the Almighty troubleth me. Because I was not cut off before the darkness, the remnant, Neither hath he covered the darkness from my face. The Jew longing for God. Psalm 57. Psalm 57. Like I said, he, he, he showed me Job 23 and Psalm 57 on Thursday. And I was like kind of, eh, what, 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 I don't get it. I don't get it. Job 23. Longing for God. Psalm 57, crying out for his mercy. The Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Psalm 57. Be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. Sorry about that, brethren. My wife is doing some cooking and we have these annoying smoke detectors that go off. That's what you heard, okay? Psalm 57. Let's, let's continue. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven. He shall save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Shelah. Like the son of perdition going forth after the Jews. Imploring God for his mercy during the time of Jacob's trouble. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is among lions. My soul is among lions, and our adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion. And I lie even among them that are set on fire. You mean those who have taken the mark of the beast and are determined to go to hell? 
are going to hell? You don't say. Even the sons of men, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit for me into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves. See, these devils that are casting this, or digging this pit, they're going to fall into it themselves. They're going to reap with their mother Roman Catholicism. And right here, he who endures to the end shall be saved. Verse 7 on verse 11 in Psalm 57. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Awake up, my glory. Awake, psaltery and harp. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Wow. Wow, huh? Wow. Yeah. So see, they're longing for God, and then they're calling out for mercy once they get it. See. Now go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? It's not the great tribulation for the church. No, it's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Time of Jacob's trouble is what? For the Jews. Okay? Matthew chapter 24. We will be reading verses 15 on to verse 28. Okay? Verses 15 on to verse 28 in Matthew chapter 24. Okay? Go there. Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 on to verse 28. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, the abomination of desolation. Who is that? The son of perdition. That man of sin. The beast. Stand in the holy place? What's that? The rebuilt third temple. Which they can get, uh, which they can put up just like that. My wife asked a question yesterday. It's like, well, are they going to start building the temple now while we are here? Or is it going to, uh, they build it during troublous times uh, after we're out of here? I don't know. But see, unlike some, They've been preparing, the Jews have been preparing for them to rebuild that temple. Uh, and I believe that they can get that thing up in a matter of months. But see, they're going to have to get rid of that Dome of the Rock, which is going to make all the Muslims go berserk. See? See? But yeah, I believe totally that the Jews will be able to put that third temple up in no time flat. Okay? Let's continue. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. They're like, oh, wow. It, what those guys who got, you know, disappeared, they were all telling us the truth. Our Lord is saying, when you see this, you better run. Similar in a way to the Exodus, how they were taken out in haste. Right? Here, it's like, wow, they see that? They better bolt. No time, see. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, Neither on the Sabbath day. Hold your place here. Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. 
See, the Sabbath is going to come back during the time of Jacob's trouble. The Sabbath is not commanded for us today to keep to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, okay? Keeping the Sabbath, unless you're a Seventh-day Adventist, but uh, keeping the Sabbath is not required for your salvation to be right with God or to stay saved to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. If you want to keep the Sabbath, go right ahead. Knock yourself out. It is not a requirement for salvation to stay saved or to remain saved. Okay? It's not a requirement. Prove it to you. Absolutely. You know, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Romans chapter 13, verse 9. Here are the commandments for us Christians today, right? Excuse me for that. But here are the commandments for us, the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth. For this thou shalt not kill, and for this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill. Here's something that is, um, oh, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Find thou shalt not bear false witness in the NIV, the NASB, and the ESV. Find that thou shalt not bear false witness in those perversions. Maybe because they're bearing false witness. Thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And you got to remember, in the book of Acts, they said that, they made mention that we couldn't bear it. We couldn't bear to keep these commandments ourselves. Okay? And the Sabbath was a sign for the Jews. Hence, it is not required for us today to the Jew first and also to the Greek. A Greek is a Gentile. We're not required to keep the Sabbath today. Hence, the Sabbath is going to return during the time of Jacob's trouble because it's the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, let's continue. Matthew chapter 24 at verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor nor ever shall be. When they figure it out, okay, now this doesn't mean that the first three years are peaceful. <clears throat> Hello, people. The son of perdition is going forth conquering and to conquer, okay? He's going to leave a wake of destruction in his path, okay? It's not going to be a time of peace. He's going to go forth in the name of peace to destroy the Muslims, I believe, Okay? But it's going to be war, death, famine, chaos. Okay? But see, once the Jews figure it out, the son of perdition is going to go ape and going to turn up the volume, so to speak. Okay? <clears throat> For then shall be great tribulation, descriptive, not a title, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. See, the time of Jacob's trouble is going to make the Holocaust of the Jew look like nothing. You who are going to be left behind, your feeble minds are not going to be able to comprehend the horror that you're going to see and go through. But remember, just believe. Yeah. And except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. It's going to be so bad that they're going to be echoing out like in Psalm 57. Longing for God in Job 23. It's going to get so bad that the Lord in his mercy is going to have... Okay, that's enough. You've had enough. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect, not what Calvin says... The elect here in the context, this is he's talking to Jews, describing the time of Jacob's trouble. Context, the elect here are the Jews. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Check this out. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ. Singular. Here is Christ. Lo, here is Christ. Or there, believe it not. Because remember, the son of perdition 
I'm the Christ. Okay? Note that verse 23, singular. Okay? Look at verse 24. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets. Remember also what Christ means? Mashiach, anointed one. Christ also means anointed one. So Christ's plural with a singular Christ there in verse 23. The son of perdition is saying, I am God, right? And he's going to send out his anointed ones and false prophets and show and shall shew great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect, the Jews. Hold your place here. Go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 on to verse 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 on to verse 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And go to 1 John chapter 4. <laughs> 1 John chapter 4. Okay. 1 John chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 6. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And in context here, this is talking about those who are preaching. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. It's already here in the world today, but it's going to be fulfilled. During the time of Jacob's troubles. You don't say. Preparing people, right? Let's continue. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Go back to Matthew chapter 24, verse 25. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Oh boy, huh? Yeah, yeah. The hearts are going to be, be fixed, waiting for the Lord to come back when they have the Son of Perdition and his ministers false Christs, anointed ones, and false prophets. See? See? Now, go to Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18. Verses 1 on to verse 8. 
Revelation chapter 17 identifies who's, who Mystery Babylon is. Roman Catholicism. It's Roman Catholicism. Unlike what Mr. Henry Morris says. Unlike what, um, uh, what's his name? Shepherd's Chapel says. It's Mystery Babylon the Great, Roman Catholicism. Okay? Revelation chapter 18, verses 1 on to verse 8. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great has fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, Roman Catholicism, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Because the Jesuits, remember, are all about the money. Okay? They put on a shoe of humility, but inwardly they are raving wolves. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. Remember what we looked at in Matthew? They're like, oh, whoa! And that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached up unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Like that one video Brother Brian did about the one church that doesn't get forgiven. Yeah. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. The ultimate destruction of Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism. Okay, the ultimate destruction. Roman Catholicism. Go to Job chapter 27. Job chapter 27. We're almost done. Besides, I got breakfast waiting for me. Got breakfast waiting for me, which is probably going to be cold, but got to, got to, got to do this. Job chapter 27. Verses 1 on to verse 13. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, As God liveth, who hath taken away my judgment, and the Almighty who hath vexed my soul, all the while my breath, my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. My lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. God forbid that I should justify you. Till I die, I will not remove mine integrity from me. He who endureth unto, unto the end, the same shall be saved. My righteousness I hold fast, and will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. His, the heart is fixed. Let mine enemy be as the wicked, and he that riseth up against me as the unrighteous. You're going to share your fate with your mother, Mystery Babylon, the great Roman Catholicism, all you Jesuit coadjutors. <clears throat> For what is the hope of the hypocrite? Though he hath gained, when God taketh away his soul, will God hear his cry when trouble cometh upon him? Will he delight himself in the Almighty? Will he call upon God? I will teach you by the hand of God. That which is with the Almighty will I not conceal. Behold, all ye yourselves have seen it. Why then are ye thus altogether vain? The lake of fire falling with mystery Babylon. Okay, since you take the mark of the beast, right? Okay. This is the portion of the wicked man, of a wicked man with God, and the heritage of the of oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. Oh boy, oh boy. 
And of course, go to Revelation chapter 9 now. See, because we've got to remember, brethren, during this time, there are, and even today, there are people who are just not going to repent, broken of themselves and be contrite. There are people, I can name a few, who have made, crossed that line of no return and are servants of Satan. They have made their choice. They're damned. It's not that the Lord can't save them, but they have made their choice. And they're, they're, they're gone. They have crossed that point of no return. Okay? Here's some examples of this. Before the mark of the beast in Revelation chapter 9, verses 20 and 21. Okay? Even when the church of the living God is gone, and all this stuff is happening, in the book of Revelation, the time of Jacob's trouble, Revelation 9, verses 20 and 21. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. <sighs> that image, is it a statue or is it something electronic? Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, pharmakeia, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts, pharmakeia, pharmacies, drugs. Oh, really? And also, also, Revelation chapter 16, verse 9. Revelation 16, verse 9. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. Okay? And this is before uh, Revelation 17 and 18, before the destruction of Mystery Babylon. Okay? For the revelation that, hey, it's Roman Catholicism. And also in Revelation 16, verse 21. Okay? And there fell upon men a great hail, a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. These people are going to be far gone during this time, especially once they take the mark of the beast. Okay, and and go to Revelation chapter nineteen. Revelation chapter nineteen. Okay. Revelation chapter 19, the second coming, okay? Verses 11 on to verse ooh, 21, okay? Revelation 19, verses 11 on to verse 21. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his, on, and on his head were many crowns, whereas the son of perdition, which the Lord sets forth in the book of Revelation, has a crown and a bow. Yeah. Yeah, to shoot at the innocent, privily shoot at the innocent without cause. Yeah, yeah. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. This is the Lord Jesus Christ at his second coming. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture. A vesture is an article of clothing dipped in blood, and his name is called the capital W Word of God. One of seven appearances of the capital W, Word of God. Okay? And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's us! The church of the living God. Okay? And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, and with it, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture an article, article of clothing. And on his thigh, that vesture article of clothing was on his thigh. 
a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of a mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet. Remember what we looked at earlier about that uh, other beast? He's identified as the false prophet, okay? This is what I was talking about. That wrought miracles before him, which, had, which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with his flesh. Look at verse 20. Okay, go to Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. Here's your Catholic, uh, Catholic Trinity. Here's the Trinity for you. Revelation 20, verse 10. Let's read to verse 15 and then we'll be done. Okay, but here's the Trinity. Here's the Trinity. And the devil, who is the devil, the dragon, that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast, that man of sin, the son of perdition, and the false prophet are, that other beast that spake as a dragon, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. There's the Trinity. The devil, the beast, and the false prophet. There's your Trinity, Catholic. And for all of you, you devils, you Jesuit coadjutors, all of you who are not saved. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Excuse me, got to write this down. See, people are going to be able to get saved during the time of Jacob's trouble, but it's faith and works, dear friend. Not the gospel that is today. Okay? Okay? The, the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be so horrific that our minds are can't comprehend it. And all you devils and all you Jesuit coadjutors, you are preparing these people to take this stuff. May the Lord reward you according to your wicked deeds, you devils. If you see this and you've been pricked in your heart, please consider these things and watch the salvation video that the Lord gave me to do on this, in the description box. It's over two hours, but go ahead. And if you're cut to the heart, and gnash, the Lord reward you according to your evil deeds. That's going to be it. Got to go, got to eat my cold breakfast. <laughs> 
Uh, more videos are coming. Like I said, um, this one at a time thing is very, this is what the Lord will have me to do, how he will have me to do it. So um, hopefully this will help you consider these things. Um, thank you. We love you. Thank you to all of you who pray for us and for those of you who have had mercy on us. Thank you so much. And may our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be magnified. We'll see you in the next video. In Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. Bye-bye.